How are you doing, buddy? I'm alright, man. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Okay, so today I think I'm, I need to try and explain the difference between, firstly, the word genetics and then epigenetics. Because originally, two about two and a half years ago, we gave you a genetic test, yeah, which unlocked and you discovered lots of specific genetic predispositions, whether it be how well you responded to food, your training, injury, your MSTN, the Hercules gene that you have. So you've got quite a, a rare variant of not having quite as much myostatin, so you put on muscle quite easily, Yeah, obviously. Um, we've moved on a bit now <laughs> to um, epigenetics. So genetic, a genetic test will give you specific outcomes on your predispositions, which, which don't change. Okay. All humans have the same DNA. We've all got the same genes, rough, roughly 25,000, there or thereabouts. But each gene has got a multitude of variations, so the way that it actually works and functions, okay? The way that epigenetics works, it sits above your genes and in many instances controls your genes. So the way that you train, uh, the way that you lead your life, your stress, your sleep, will add little chemical groups onto the top of the genes called methyls, and then they basically control the gene function and they act in many instances like a mutation. So take over your own genes, basically. They control their control. function. Yeah. yeah, they will never change the predisposition. They're pretty much locked in unless you get exposed to lots of radiation. Yeah. Um, but the way they function day to day will be affected by your everyday lifestyle. Ah, okay. Pretty much. Right. Um, Makes so it's, sense. Yeah, it's a shame we couldn't have done this leading up to World's Strongest Man because your training and everything that you were doing would have had a certain impact on your methylation yeah. uh, and your epigenetics but now now that the technology is available to us um, we can see specifically and we'll come on to this in a second how what your biological age is as opposed to your chronological age because we've got two ages that people are aware of your chronological age which is stamped in your passport your birth certificate that's the number of years that you actually are biological age is actually how you're aging internally and how your lifestyle is affecting that so we can come on to that in a second okay um, then we'll look at your eye age your hearing and your memory um, and then we'll talk through some some of how your life your food your training has affected those specific areas and then we, what we can do to offset them okay okay